Greetings my brothers and sisters, peace be with you. Today my topic is empty hands. We know hands are empty. So what it literally means, we grew up in a culture when we were young. If we are going to somebody's house, they used to tell us we should take something either flowers, fruits, sweets, something which is nice to give it to the people whom we are visiting. And I have seen in my own life when we went to somebody's house, a relative's or friend's house, we need to carry something or the other, some fruits or sweets or flowers, etc. Likewise, if somebody were to come to our house, they used to bring sweets, flowers, etc. So when we know that there is a family with children, so if we want to make them happy and joyful, we will take something like this. But today we will see how we have to always go something with something to our Creator God when we go to worship Him. Whether we worship Him in the silence of our hearts or in the church when we are doing the Holy Eucharistic celebration or for any things we need to take something to our Lord we should not go empty handed today we'll see from scriptures how God wants us to always go with something to him not go empty handed of course we have seen some of the latest uh, songs of our times, that Empty Hands music album, which talks about how being grateful and how you can plant the seeds with your empty hands, how you can be kind with your empty hands, how you can make somebody's life beautiful with your empty hands. And yes, how we can love every person with our empty hands. So let's look at some of the scripture verses today and uh, see how best we can prepare ourselves whenever we worship our Creator God. My brothers and sisters, if you look at the scriptures, the word empty, nothing, occurs 38 times. But the word empty hands occurs 13 times. So there is some significance in this. But all we want to understand here is God wants us not to go empty handed when we go to him or when we go to our fellow human beings. We need to at least carry that love with us. Our hands should be full of love, kindness, mercy and compassion when we deal with our fellow human beings. And like to God, we need to surrender ourselves to Him. Our offering is ourselves. Our human souls are the offerings to Him. Let's look at scriptures. Now in Mark chapter 12 verse 3, they seized Him beat him cruelly and sent him empty-handed. Mark chapter 12 is the story where we have this good Samaritan story. So how the Samaritan gets attacked by bandits and they take the seize everything from him and sent him and left him empty handed nothing he was he had nothing and then we find how the persons who go you know that this is, is a traveler and then the samaritan comes and you know helps that person bandages his wound and then puts him in an inn and then le lets the innkeeper know that whatever expenses he is going to incur on him he will pay that back on his return so what i'm seeing here is left empty handed so these bandits they attacked him and killed him and almost killed him. But 
left him with nothing. Let's look at one, one more verse. In Luke chapter 1 verse 53. The hungry he has satisfied with choice of gifts. But the rich he sent empty handed. Now when we are poor, when we are hungry, only then God can fill us. But if we are full stomach, we are not going to be, God is not going to fill us. Our mind will be looking for some that rest, that siesta. If we have a good food and if you want to know, you will never think of God and you will just say, no, I want to have some good rest. Lie down and, you know, we talk about that siesta. But a person who is hungry, he will be aching. He will be waiting to fill that hunger. We have to be in that mode if we have to, when we are worshipping God. We need to be hungry for Him. Hungry for His word. When we are worshipping, when we are reading the scriptures, then we will be filled. If you are full and if you are not coming half-hearted, you are not going to be going anywhere. Let's look at Luke chapter 20 verse 10. Again we talk about, here we see about the wine dresses, how the master sends his servants to the wine and during the time of produce to get his produce is uh, due uh, or produce but then they treat him badly. They treat one worker after the other. They treat him and they send him empty handed. They don't give him anything. Likewise, if you see in the Old Testament, in Exodus chapter 3 verse 21, Moses was given this instruction, you cannot go empty handed. You will have something. So pick up the staff and go and that staff will be with you. Likewise, in Exodus chapter 23 verse 15, God tells Moses, tell the people that no one shall come empty before me. Because they all have should have the fullest. They should bring something with them. If they have to come to meet the Almighty God, they have to come with something. Likewise in Exodus chapter 34 verse 20, none shall appear before me empty handed. God is a jealous God and he wants you to go to him surrendering yourself. The thing what we can give beyond, there's no greater thing beyond us, our free will. If we give our free will as the gift to him, he's going to be pleased. And that's our purpose, to please God. If we can please God, he can say, Mark chapter 1 verse 11. You are my beloved, I am well pleased with you. And this is what we need to hear. And we can hear this only if we surrender our free will to him. Let's see some other uh, Old Testament books. Deuteronomy chapter 15 verse 13. When we set the slaves free, do not let them go empty handed. Provide them everything, whatever they need for their journey or till their settlement. My brothers and sisters, today we find in some of the cultures, some of the societies, if a person is terminated from the work for no fault of his, then he has given a package. He has given a severance package for him to take that and settle himself till he finds another job. This originated from the scriptures. When you are letting the slave go, do not let the slave empty hand. My brothers and sisters, but, but there are some cultures, especially in the Middle East, if the person, if the owner doesn't like a person, he would not give a single penny and he will just send him, let him go to, let him die. It's as good as telling the person, let him die, killing the person. So these are the things we need to look at. Even if he's an enemy, if we are letting him go, we need to make sure that he has whatever he needs to sustain himself and re-establish his life. 
So we can never let anybody go empty hand. We need to give them what you want because they are made in the image and likeness of God. Now in Ruth chapter 3 verse 17, do not go empty unto thy mother-in-law's house. So even the poorest of poor, here we find in the book of Ruth, six measures of barley. Barley is the probably the poorest people have this grain, much lesser than wheat. So even the poorest of poor is being advised that if they are going to their in-laws house, if the lady is going to the in-laws house, take six measures of barley. Now, my brothers and sisters, I think we should be fully aware that we can always give something when people come and visit us. Something, not let them go empty-handed. And that's a practice what we have to see in the scriptures. And we need to follow that. We need to go back to our traditions. Not just caring for nothing. A person comes, visits and goes, doing nothing. When we go, we need to go and give whatever. We can't go with empty hands. We need to give them something or the other. At least a meal. Sit with them and have a meal together. At least a drink. At least some water. For them to partake that they have come. Acknowledging God's presence in them. Now in Job chapter 22 verse 9. Never send the widows empty handed. My brothers and sisters, if at all we come and get an opportunity to meet a widow, whatever may be her condition, you might, she might look rich, etc. at the front. But deep within her, she is having the pain of being that widow. So we can't let her go empty-handed. We have to share either our time, our talent or our treasure. We can give her love, we can give her kindness, we can acknowledge God's presence in her with good words. Jeremiah chapter 50 verse 9. The Lord tells, You will not come empty handed if you do my job, if you do my task, what I give to you. You will be blessed. See, this is God's promise. God is holy. He wants his children also to be holy. So if God doesn't want to send anyone empty handed, Neither should we send anybody empty-handed. We need to always give them something or the other. Anything which falls between the time, talent and treasure. Whatever you can afford. I'm sure the time you can afford. You can give the words of kindness, love and acknowledging God's presence in them. In the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 35 verse 4. They shall not appear empty before the Lord. Likewise, in the book of Sirach, do not come to the temple without an offering. My brothers and sisters, this is one of the important things. When we have learned to not to let our fellow human beings go empty-handed, out of that kindness, that gratefulness, out of the blessings God has given us, we want to share our time, talent and treasure. Then, how much should we take when we are going to worship our God? Either when you are praying before to God at your, by your bedside or you are praying to God in the church or you are attending the Holy Eucharistic celebration. We need to take ourselves my brothers and sisters, if we are going to attend the Holy Eucharistic celebration, we have the guardian angel and the patron saint accompanying us. And they want us to carry those offerings for us. So whatever offerings we want to do, praying for others, praying for a particular issue, praying for a particular problem, praying for particular recovery, praying for particular financial problems, Everything has to be taken for that Holy Eucharistic celebration. You can't just go for the Holy Eucharistic celebration without anything. Just go there, attend it and come back. No. We need to carry some offering to Him. Some offering to our eternal God. 
And he has said, do not come empty handed. He has given that warning time and again in different times in the Old Testament as well as in the New Testament. Only if we go hungry with all our needs and take it to him and then give it our guardian angel and our patron saint who walk with us in that procession when we are heading towards the Holy Mass. So then they would be praying as well for us. What is mentioned in the Revelation, book of Revelation that the saints pray for us and this is the time. Whatever needs we have when we take it to the Lord in the mind, our, in the silence of our hearts and take it to him during the Holy Eucharistic celebration, those prayers will be answered. God will grant us according to his holy will. But we need to take it. We can't just go empty handed. Yes, we have our time. We are giving it. Yes, that's good. But the time has to be focused on him. Eyes fixed on him. Giving everything to him. The free will to him for that day. To give us the strength to face all these challenges of that day. Likewise, our treasures, if we are yes, contributing to the church, our tithing, 10% of whatever we have or produce, we are giving it to him, great. And our talents, whatever talents we have, we can just give it to him. A talent where we can proclaim the word of God, a talent where we can sing, a talent where we can help, a talent where we can usher, whatever is required, whatever we are comfortable with, but we have to give it to God. So we have to take that with us when we go to the celebration. Likewise, in the mornings, when we pray, as soon as we get up, early morning prayer, we need to offer something. We have to offer the day. We have to offer the, our free will to him so that he gives us, he fills us. When we go empty hands, when we go with our empty hands, he will give us. But we need to surrender our free will to him. We need to seek his will for us. When we do that, we will never go with empty hands or with no petitions towards our Creator God. We need to ask him. God our Father wants to us to ask him. Just like how we feel as parents that the children should come and ask us. The moment they ask us, we feel so happy. Yes, the child doesn't have anybody but you as a parent. So when the child asks, you want to give the child everything. Likewise, our Father God, who is all-powerful, who is omnipotent, is waiting for his children to go ask him, to offer him whatever they can. My brothers and sisters will remember this. We'll never go empty hands to our Creator God.